if you're going to strictly argue that we need to amend the Constitution based on economic provisions, because under the guise that we need to improve our economic numbers, mm. we need to mm. attract foreign direct investments, the proof of the pudding, for instance, and not to, not to angat our banco, was during the time of President Aquino, our numbers went high. In fact, it was the first time that we achieved investment grade rating without amending the Constitution. We remember, I remember during our time as well, the cab some of the cabinet secretaries were also arguing for amending the Constitution. And what, what did the president say? He believed in two things. One, I'm referring to President Aquino, the late President Aquino, the predictability of business rules and a level playing field. That was the only requirement that he did. So we leveled the playing field. We made the business rules predictable. So when you invest, you don't change the rules midstream. And so there was a consistency in the business rules, and that's why foreign investments came in. You didn't need to change the constitution before uh, under President Pino in order to lure foreign investments. That was more than, not more than, but nearly 10 years ago now. It is also true that times are harder. We are competing with our neighbors now for their investments. You've seen the rise of Vietnam in the past decade alone, and now we're competing with them. If you, I don't have the numbers right now, but I know ours is a paltry sum compared mm -hmm. to what they're getting every year. So given all the externalities around it, does it not come back to the question of, okay, it, well, let's make it more appetizing, let's, let's make it more uh, palatable for investors I, I to come I agree here. with that, but the question is, do you need to change the Constitution? Would it be rather that you're making it doing business easier? That's what we call ease of doing business. You're making rules, uh, minimizing, diminishing the number of permits that you come with. It's more on the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. actions that you, you know, you're like, you're like, you know, you change the whole policy, but the day-to-day -day might still be the same. Mm. And we've seen that. I mean, the fact that if you're able to, look, the Constitution was enacted in 87. President Aquino came in in 2010. We grew because it changed fundamentally the concept of ease of doing business. For instance, you, one of the things that we were able to do was minimize corruption by on public infrastructure. You know how we did it? We, we enacted the public-private partnership. We allowed private investments to come in and fund the infrastructure. It's being done, continuously being done right now, and they're reviving. President Duterte removed that PPP. President Marcos is bringing back PPP. That You take it away from public, public funds, you allow private funds to come in, mm. like what they're doing with, for instance, the rehabilitation of the airports. Right. It's not, it's uh, people, the, the private businessmen will be mindful of the expenses going on there. So there's really, you, you, you curb corruption. And all our numbers, by the way, during that time were up. We, we were mm. lower in, in, in corruption. We we're high in transparency. These are just basic governance. That's, that's why we say good governance is good economics. Mm. If you govern well, yeah. if you, you implement your rules properly, people will come in. It's really predictability. Mm.